This is the FM Gold Channel of All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you a discussion on India-US Strategic Partnership and Defence Cooperation. The participants are K.P. Fabian, former diplomat, and Ilova Roy Chaudhary, journalist. United States President Donald Trump is coming here on his maiden visit on the 24th and the 25th of February. India plans a very grand welcome, of course, for him. And a slew of initiatives have been undertaken to cement the nature of the India-US bilateral relationship. And we will be talking about the nature of the strategic partnership between the United States and India and how the contours of that particular partnership were absolutely laid down in December when the foreign and defense ministers of both countries met in the 2 plus 2 ministerial in Washington. In that, uh, some very basic guidelines for the vision ahead for the strategic partnership were laid out, important among which are the fact that the basic exchange and cooperation agreement is going to be happening and being signed by President Trump and Prime Minister Modi when he comes here, the baker that's called, which will in effect give a framework for all of the kinds of future cooperation agreements, particularly in the defense arena. We also have major cooperation on the counter-terrorism front, and the Indo-Pacific is particularly emerging as another area of convergence between the two countries. Ambassador Fabian, in this context, how important do you think is the visit of President Donald Trump? Well, the visit of uh, the United States President is always important. And uh, for us in India, it's an important visit. And let me add that it's an important visit for President Trump also. The importance, you know, is a shared feature. And you were mentioning about defense cooperation, well, which is, it is important. But we should also take note of the fact cooperation in the trade area is certainly not as strong as it is in the defense cooperation area. While the defense cooperation is naturally in India's interest, India's security, because unfortunately India geopolitical scientists have divided the world into zones of conflict and zones of tranquility. So it is necessary for India to make sure that uh, India has uh, the adequate uh, defense uh, preparedness, which means technology and arms. And United States naturally is an important supplier. So that is important for us. But as I said earlier, it's important for the United States also because India has emerged as the biggest buyer of arms from the United States. Mm -hmm. That is point number one. Point number two is, to my mind, President Donald Trump is the most enthusiastic president to support the sale of arms by the United States military industrial complex. He takes great pride in it and he is doing it with much efficiency. Well, apparently on the eve almost of his visit, India has agreed to approve a $2.6 billion deal to buy military helicopters from the United States Defense, uh, from Lockheed Martin primarily. And uh, this is part of this almost comprehensive $10 billion <coughs> layout that India has broadly committed to on the Indo-US defense uh, sector. One of the areas in which India is looking to reduce the trade deficit, and that is something that President Trump is extremely concerned about, even though the U.S. trade deficit with India is not very high. But this $10 billion goes to some extent to alleviate those particular deficits. India will also be looking to finalize during President Trump's visit this Defense Technology and Transfer Initiative. So these are fairly major things which can perhaps help push the Made in India, Make in India initiative that the Prime Minister has initiated in terms of the building of localized weaponry in India. Ambassador Fabian, again, while it isn't correct to only see the India-US relationship in terms of the defense initiative, the Indo-Pacific is emerging as a very important part of this whole strategic partnership. What exactly does that entail? Yes, to start with Indo-Pacific, you know, the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, you can't separate them. And from India's security point of view, it is an area of interest to us. So the recognition by the United States that it is Indo-Pacific is important. 
But at the same time, I want to make one or two points. You very correctly said that the trade deficit of the United States with India is nothing much to write home about. If you look at it, 346 billion with China, Japan 69, Canada 27, Mexico 102, Germany 67, and with India about 20 billion. But you also mentioned about the defense purchases we make. Yes, they should be considered. Only thing is that the arms purchases are not part of the commercial statistics, so they don't enter, though we have been trying to buy more shale oil from them. So this is what is happening, and it is important for us to make the point that defense purchases also should be taken into account when you talk of bilateral exchanges. But let me make a final point. No two countries have an equal trade. Equal trade is never there. So we should not be aiming at it. To skirt around the quadrilateral, for example, of India, the United States, Japan and Australia is one of the initiatives that is coming to be fructified in a certain way as part of our security and strategic partnership. And it's almost been now elevated to the foreign ministerial level. Do you think that an initiative like this can bring other aspects to the fore or do you think this is only intended to perhaps curb the rise of, say, China? I'll put it this way. China is rising. At the same time, we have to recognize that across the board in the United States, whether you are Democrat or Republican, whether you are think tank, there is a consensus that China is a new rival to the United States and that China's rise has to be contained. But India has to sort of look at it in a holistic way because India has to play the diplomatic game with considerable finesse. And I have always maintained that uh, the art of diplomacy requires uh, the ability to dance with more than one partner at a time. So would you then say that the United States is a very important pillar of India's sort of multipolarity of the diplomacy as we are practicing it today. The fact that we have such close strategic ties with the United States makes other countries also look towards India. To my mind, I could be wrong, but to my mind, if India-United States defense relationship is strong, then China will take note of it. For example, I mean, everyone talks about the fact that the Indo-US nuclear deal of 2008 is one of the reasons that everyone sat up and took notice and said, what happened? You know, India suddenly came on to the, the big table. To that extent, India's involvement with the United States is not getting very far in terms of the regional initiative. Do you think that might change with President Trump's visit? I do not know, but I doubt it. So then it makes it all the more important that the India gets some kind of definite waiver from the United States as far as the Chabahar port and the surrounding development is concerned. Because I think the United States recognizes that Chabahar is a very important strategic port, not just for India, but also for the rest of the world. So do you think that Chabahar will be a kind of a game changer in the kind of relationship that India and the United States hope to have? Well, let me make one point. That this is only a personal point of view. I have always maintained that we should get out of this waiver-seeking mentality. We should be able to tell the United States it's a good friend. Chabahar is important for us. It's a question of connectivity with Central Asia, including Afghanistan. And therefore, don't be difficult with us. We should not be waiver-seeking. And I hope it will happen. Because if you go on seeking waivers, you know, that only makes things difficult for us. I mean, for example, even on the whole Katsa thing and the India-Russian deal, the, the Triumph F-400 defense missile shield. I mean, the, the whole point of India seeking waivers seems a little strange, considering that these are things that every country does in its own national interest. But the American point of view is that if you don't get out of these deals, then the various logistical agreements that India and the United States have can suffer. It's, it's a complicated agreement, which we don't necessarily have to get into. But it is a fact that the India-US defense engagement today is probably the most intense that it has ever been. You know, you now have uh, talk of tri-services, combined exercises to do with a whole lot of issues. You have Indians posted in as liaison officers at the CENTCOM, at the Pacific COM. 
all kinds of crucial vital United States defense establishments which were earlier only open to its NATO and very close allies. What does that actually convey to India on one side and on the other side you have a situation where the trade is such a major problem? As regards, you know, the American argument that uh, our acquiring S-400 might uh, sort of, in a manner of speaking, cause some risk of uh, leakage and all that of what uh, American equipment and technology are in India, I don't accept that argument. I think uh, we can convince Americans that uh, we shall make sure that uh, whatever we get from them will not be leaked out, you know, wittingly or unwittingly to anybody else. That's fairly clear. A good percentage of our equipment comes from Russia. So they want to edge Russia out. But uh, I think we have to look at our relations with the United States in a holistic way. And uh, defense is only important part, but only a part of it. Mm -hmm. Trade, again, is a part of it and an important part. And uh, that is what we should strive for, so that uh, we have a relationship which is uh, well balanced. Well, 98 billion and in the last year was not that bad, but uh, there are various squeezes that are happening. Again, to overcome that whole issue of dependence on uh, Russian equipment that the Indian Defense Forces have, the United States is even willing to give us this maintenance, repair and overhaul agreement by which, again, the whole issue of repairs and maintenance of defense equipment gets taken care of, which earlier wasn't part actually of the packages. So what happens now is that defense seems to have become a very, very important part of the relationship and counter-terrorism. Where can India sort of leverage these two aspects particularly to get the most out of this particular visit? Well, defense has, you know, emerged as the most important part of the relationship. But uh, I want to say one thing. Don't put all your eggs in one single basket. However attractive the basket is, because that way there will be a dependency which uh, has its own risks, you know. Now, what is going to happen in the current visit, I suppose, uh, when President uh, Trump and uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, sit down and talk, they will decide what all areas they want to cover. I suppose uh, good and uh, fruitful talks will take place. Thank you very much, Ambassador Favis. Pleasure always. You were listening to a discussion on India-U.S. Strategic Partnership and Defense Cooperation. The participants were K.P. Fabian, former diplomat, and Nilova Roy Chaudhary, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.com. You can also follow us on the News on AIR app for updates. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.